Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to talk about Splinterlands land expansion and I want to talk about how delay will cost you. The important thing about Splinterlands is that it provides rewards for your time and attention. That, what, that's what makes this revolutionary. If this is going to be the explosive, innovative, massive su success that I expect it will be, Splinterlands, it's going to be out of a product that it is different in that it rewards its players meaningfully for their time and attention. That's the whole secret sauce to this thing. And I'm telling you that the, the, the rewards have always been and will always be trivial in nature on a daily basis, but consequential across a long enough time horizon. And that fact is how and why you need to attend to land today. You need to attend to the game today during the bear markets as, as no one is paying attention. And when these rewards seem trivial, what is research? I don't even know. That is the moment that you need to be investing time and effort in order to position yourself so that you accumulate the tokens because no one really understands what it is yet. And the vision and on the basis of confidence in the vision for the team and the, their ability to reach their intended end, you want to position yourself with as much of these tokens as possible. And so not only that, but there's a compounding factor with SPS earning. The more you earn today, the more you will earn tomorrow. And with cards, soul bounds, when you play the game, the more you have today, the more you'll earn tomorrow through greater and greater victories. You'll get, you'll unlock merits. The whole system is built in a way that you can compound what you're acquiring. And so the key is you need to start today with land. I'm starting today. And I want to share with you some of what I'm doing and I want to cast this vision for you to not delay because delay is lack of compounded interest really for your own future betterment and benefit. Okay. So I have prepared, I did not have adequate DEC to fire up everything. And, but you can see here on the screen, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of my work sites are completed. And I think two or three of them are in progress. I wish it would say here on this level, if they were in progress, I think if I click on some of these rares, we'll see that they're currently building, but I don't remember which is which I think my caldera rare here is in progress. Yeah. See building a grain farm. For some of my grain farm, because I had grain set aside, I didn't need to rush in, in terms of sp spending time crystals to expedite, because I don't need that extra grain. I had a, a stockpile from, from buying the bonuses when the plots of land were surveyed. So I've got nine activated. I've got probably another three that are building their buildings. Um, and I need to keep going. I need to get, finish this off. I need to find a way to get the DC to get launched. And I know I, I, I see, some of the content that's being created and it's like this is underwhelming this is the rewards are less than we thought it is you know land is it's just a little bit of a pessimistic angle and i say that's exactly the reason why we want to act now if you felt that you were going to get you know a game-changing amount of wealth on day one from land you didn't understand land so hear me the, the recipe is never days, weeks, months. It's always long time horizon. It's multi years. And if you're investing now, if you're, if you already, if you already have land and you don't activate it, recognize there's a missed opportunity every moment that goes by. That's what I'm talking about for myself. That's why I'm in here today, even though I've got so many other things to do. I'm a busy man. You're a busy person, but we have to act quickly, especially when others aren't because there's opportunity for you to scratch and claw a few tokens here or there that they're going to miss out on. And if they're sitting on land plots that aren't currently activated and you activate, who's got the advantage? Even if ultimately they've got a thousand plots and you got 10, but you activate today and not tomorrow, there's this beginning, there's this snowball that's starting to accumulate. That's going to go downhill and start to add up consequentially. And, um, as with everything in Splinterlands, you know, there's multipliers on multipliers. Like if, if you're farming SPS, you know, I heard somebody, I've heard people say that the SPS production is like lackluster and I get it. You know, it's not, it's not massive. Let's look at my rare swamp here. I did claim some SPS early today. Looks like this one's ready to claim 17. That's over probably 24 hours. I don't know exactly to be honest, but um, it's ready to claim 17. And uh, I'm going to have to pay grain cost in order to do so. I, again, not a problem to me. You think, oh, wow, big, big whoop. You know, a rare plot of land was probably 60, 70 bucks. 
the the cards on there you know multi hundreds of dollars uh the dc that was sunk into it you know 40 bucks with the dc demand uh or that's the that's the yeah that's the dc demand so i mean that's a significant massive cost and all i'm getting is 34 cents on a day remember that this is compounding you get what 17 if i claim this right now i get 17 sps and that's the end of the story that's what 20 probably 35 cents and that's done no first of all sps can appreciate in the future and i think it will but, but more than that in the meantime before it ever appreciates there's a compounding possibility through rank play you know you stake it on your game and there's a i think a 20 percent apr let's see there's an apr that we receive from just having it staked in the game the apr is currently 14 percent you get 14 percent compounding on that that as long as you're claiming as long as you're earning it today and then in claiming it today you get to stake it today and once it's staked it's producing 14 percent apr that's amazing in not in days or weeks or months but in years that's going to matter across even one year that really matters if you get 30 a day and 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 you call it i guess if you get uh 17 a day and you call it let's see quickly 17 times 365 six thousand a year times point uh let's go well i guess 1.14 14 percent you know 6200 becomes seven thousand. it matters and then and then the next year it's another 14 percent, right uh well we'll, we'd, we'll depend on what the apr is then but it matters it compounds you start earning interest on interest this is the power of acting quickly this is the power and the importance of recognizing the opportunity in front of you today you know and this this applies to every part of the game uh card prices you know recognizing this before others did you know the other i've been tracking the prices i've been sharing them with you on on x by the way love musk musk's a beast what a savage the whole uh disney bob I has to bob Iger hashtag g f y but but i want to say i've been tracking on my own on my x uh the the cost of cards and the data keeps showing ticking up ticking up ticking up 33,500 for my account uh, three days ago and today another three thousand dollars up the price on peak monsters my card value 36,000 just show over 36,000 that's another 10 percent increase in my card price over the last three days I'm saying that acquiring these assets when others don't, when they aren't taking it seriously, when they, when they don't really believe in land, if you believe in land, if you believe in the game, act while others are sleeping, because there's always this opportunity for, you know, for the, the, your vision for what this is and for what it might be to be realized. And so long as you have that confidence that you you think it is a strong place to be, you're likely, you're enjoying the process and you believe in the, the, the intentions and the ability to reach the intended goal, then moving further up and further in continues to make sense, at least it does for me. You know, the degree to which we act when others aren't is the degree which we benefit. You know, if we had been paying attention and acting, you know, efficiently with our card acquisitions, let's say in October, you know, we could have seen almost a 50% increase in our, in our investment, right? That's where my, 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 my cards were 26,200 in October. And now in, at the end of November here, it's $36,000. You know, it's almost, that's probably a 40% increase. That means that I could have stretched what I'm doing if I moved at a moment when I recognized that prices were low. I, and I knew that was low and I, I didn't have any other assets to move, but the point is just being attentive to these things and taking opportunities as they arise. SPS was 700 Splintoshis, like I think at the, around the same time, I was looking at this information the other day. We're almost at peg right now. In the last 90 days, the lowest we've been is, you know, oh, look at that right there. In the last 90 days, we were at 670 Splintoshis, which is to say a 30, 35% increase. There's always these things, these moments where people aren't taking what you think is serious. They're not taking it seriously. Whether it's DC or card prices or land, research is definitely a picture in this. Um, and SPS is debt production from land is definitely a part of that. People are not currently taking it seriously. The question is, do you? Do you have the long-term mindset for where this is gonna go? And if you do, it's time to start activating the plots of land. If you have them, if you have them, it's time to activate them. And if you don't, does it make sense to maybe get one? You know, the, the the plots of land on peak monsters are still relatively cheap. I mean, really cheap even from 
from some of them. Let's let's see what the prices are at now. Look at that, 28 bucks. Now I know some of these regions are going to be less active. They're not going to be optimized. Maybe they're 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 a castle or the keep or you know not somebody you know. I get it. But some of these, like I mean, I don't. I just don't buy personally. I don't believe that twenty eight dollars is going to be a floor for for land plots. I just don't buy it. I, I in fact, I'm convinced it's wrong. I'm convinced it's wrong. And for that reason, I'm 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 of the mind that these would be these are going to make sense in across a long time horizon. I feel that way about cards. I feel that way about SPS. I feel that way about plots of land and every NFT that this game is going to create because I see it as offering an opportunity to compound your investment through time and attention. And that resource, that that reality is revolutionary within the context of video games. And, and so again, if you buy all that, it's about paying attention in this moment to correct in ways, in small ways or big ways that you're able to today so that you can position yourself more and more where you wanna be for the future, for tomorrow, for the, you know, for a week from now, for a month from now, from a year from now, are you aiming in a certain, where are you aiming? Because you will land where you aim. And if you're, you know, aimless about how you're engaging with something like this, that might mean when the bear market is roaring and the time prices are low, you're not attending to it. I don't care about that because the prices aren't impressive. And that's the exact wrong posture because that means you're not acquiring while others are and then when things get expensive you want to move in and that's going to be the exact wrong moment because you're not going to maximize returns you're not going to see you know the outsized gains you're not going to ac accumulate free resources sps and cards that are that are literally being given away for your effort and so yeah i'm just i'm here today to share this because i just really i can see in my own situation I need to recognize this and remember it and 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 move closer toward it. It doesn't mean I can do everything. I can't. Um, I only have 10,000 DEC left and that means I can act I can buy one more I can buy one more power source, but I'm gonna. And I want to get research happening and I can I know I have in here I have a magic life that's got a research hut. I've got a magic. Where's my other magic death? That's a rare. Let's activate this guy. I believe again long term where the game's going land's going to succeed research is going to be huge matt has said time and time again it's going to be deeply impactful deeply powerful he he likened it to the sps airdrop and how people he didn't say this exactly but he implied that like it's 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 going to be like that in the way where people maybe didn't think highly of it and then at some point the light switch went on and they recognized what they were dealing with and then they wanted more and more and more of it and so I'm willing to, on the on the basis of that confidence and the and the faith I have in the team and the confidence I have it that they will land where they say they're going to go, I am ready to act. Plus, I believe in land. Plus, I believe in the game. Plus, I find it entertaining. Plus, I already have these assets. So why not use them? There's that's the other thing too. Sometimes I'm not even talking about investing more money. I'm talking about utilizing what you already have and the time you already have to stretch what you can do. If you don't have all the cards you need to launch all the lands that you have can you stretch it by minimizing the number of cards you put on each plot of land i'm sure you can there's ways to get frugal about these things and in so doing multiply what you're doing and again i think it's going to matter i think there's going to come a day where we feel we don't have enough sps there's going to come a day where we feel we don't have enough cards there's going to come a day where we don't have enough research or vouchers or everything i, re I believe that and you might not you might not so if not i'm not trying to convince you but I'm speaking to the person who believes that and I'm saying, are you acting accordingly today so that you get that ball going? I'm trying to do it. So let's do this one and then we'll, we'll call the video. And uh, I should say also, I kind of mentioned this, but I'm using my time crystals. I had quite a few of them because I used them when this, I bought them when the surveying went happened. Not enough to launch every one of my lands where I want, but at the same time, quite a few. It's enough. It's been enough that I've activated five or six of my plots fully to the best of my ability like you know and and i bought the building kind of thing with the time crystals but i have i don't i don't need to rush some of them so i'm not rushing them I, I don't have so many time crystals that i just throw them you know blindly everything about this and my whole approach is being thoughtful about what i've got and using what i've got in the maximally effective path and process to gain the most i can for the least outset and cost right because i cannot afford everything and neither can you we go in here we go buy one more 5,000 DC, confirm. 
I did get 10,000 DEC from end of season leaderboard rewards, by the way, which was cool. Um, I made it, I think it was 32nd on the modern leaderboard for Diamond. That's the second time I've been on the leaderboard ever. That's the third time I've ever tried, the second time I made it. Um, and so um, I'm pleased with that. I think I probably could fight for 20,000 DEC reward. I came in pretty close, but I'm going to keep doing that, I think. And 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 I fight in wild sometimes. I almost made it to champion in wild and I, and I simultaneously... I'm like 3,800 RP in diamond. So, you know, I'm very competitive in both and we're going to keep doing that because that's going to give me some DC to keep pouring into things like this. But here, let's activate. We got our power source and then let's see what is the bonus over here. One, this is also a comment I want to make from a strategy standpoint of, an, of accessing your deck. If you're not like some of the guys, you know, I'm going to shout out virus, virus, you, you what you did with your, and even, um, bronze dragon it seems like some people really did and, and tails too did this amazing deep dive in terms of maximally affecting their plots of land what cards am i going to use planning it all out in super strategic ways excel spreadsheets are your friend i my my brain doesn't work that way and so i wasn't able to uh, but man if if that's something you can do use that like i'm saying in this whole video use your your strengths and abilities and whatever you have access to including that capacity to kind of think in that mathematic mindset to stretch what you're going to get out of the splinterlands if you can draw up excel spreadsheets to maximally allocate your resources and, and sort of extract the most and make sure you plan you're getting just as much enough grain and not too much and etc cetera, etc cetera, Brilliant, amazing. That's gonna be one way you're gonna get outsized returns over a guy like me who whose mind just doesn't work that way. But one thing I like to do is, and I haven't seen anybody do, do this on a, on a YouTube video yet. You know, there's lots of ways to categorize the information. You, you can look at just production. Obviously that's an obvious, the obvious simple way would be to just grab your, your highest production cards and slap them in there. But here's the thing, a lot of these are my favorite cards. So then you might say, well, then look at how often you play them. If you don't play them for two months, maybe you can throw a black dragon in there. Okay, yeah. But then, you know, yeah, I mean, that actually might be a good card to put in there, but it does have a 0% bonus. Um, so that is one thing I've been doing, looking at production value and then uh, cross-referencing with last played. And that can be an effective procedure. But you know what I find is even maybe more to the point is I'm trying to access... Because I know my deck and you know your deck. I know that I have a lot of gold foils, or at least I used to before I started deploying them into land, that were not really being utilized. They're not perfectly full. They were, you know, I had more than one copy, you know. I, and so let's access via foil. You know, if we look, and plus gold foils are going to provide more return, more, more production pr power. So this is an interesting way to access it. Now, cards like this, 6,000 for the Jinchwala, and it's costing me 10,000 energy. I, there's a balance here too. You want to access the maximum production with the minimum energy. And there are some cards that are going to do better than that, uh, uh, better or worse than that. And again, I want to, with the, within the gold foil, I want to access now, it's cross-referenced already by production value. So as you can see, the highest right there within the gold foil is there. This is a card that I do use. Um, I could do without, I have a regular foil, Jinchuala. Um, but I want that gold foil bonus because as you can see, I use it, you know, weekly anyways. I could maybe put this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this one in. No, it's a 0% bonus. So there's so many considerations. It's like production, yes. Energy, yes. Adjustment, also I want to think too. How often do I play it? One of the ways I'm looking through is gold though. So look, 14 hours, let's see. When 10, here we go, 10 months ago, last time I played the revealer. Okay, get out there. Get on the field, my friend. And that revealer is it has a, a energy requirement of 6,000 and a production of 3,600. Plus the brain bonus brings it up to almost 4,000. That's a great uh, production to energy requirement. And so you can be super thoughtful about this stuff or you can be quite kind of rapid and, and maybe rushed about it. I would I would strongly encourage looking, especially for those of you who have hu huge decks, making sure you're focusing on the last played functionality one month ago, Wave Brood, Gold Foil, 10% bonus there. That's an interesting one. Yep, get out get out there. One month ago, Spirit Hoarder, Gold Foil. Yeah, 2,500 production for 2,500 energy. Yeah, energy requirement to production. So energy requirement to production is, is almost a category I wish I could see, like in and of itself. 
right? Like, cause it's, it's, it's one thing to know the production. Yes, it's great. I want to know, I want, I want to minimize my energy outlays and maximize my production. That's one filter I wish I could see. Another is I wish I could prioritize another feature I wish I could see within Splinterlands or, or would be if I could, if I could like prioritize production and then attribute a secondary characteristic like okay i want production as my primary concern but then secondarily i want to know of my highest production monsters i want to see you know those i haven't played in 30 days or um you know those that are gold foil or those that are less than max B bcx if there's different you know if you could categorize i'm interested in this but i'm also interested in this and then produce a different search result i think that would be an effective way to explore this eight months ago and then, yeah, let's get him out there. He only has a zero, he has a zero percent bonus, but that's pretty interesting. I haven't played it in so long ago. Merdali Guardian, look at that. Yeah. Oh, but the energy. See, hmm. Bonus. Yep. Kinjo, get out there, my friend. And finally, one year ago, Helicor Bandit. Angelic Mandarin is a little bit better in terms of production and in terms of. Uh, cost so we'll go that way so my land plots are definitely not opt entirely optimized but they are i now have more than half of them either up and running or on their way to be running meaning you see just taking oh i need another 18 thou okay well we're gonna make that happen so i'm short on what i thought i would need so I need to pull in 18,000 DEC somehow. But, and th that means I'm going to be done with my land plot development for now because I don't have a ton of extra money right now um, to move in. But as soon as I do, I'm going to be really thoughtful about how I do this. I want to go research over here, build with time crystals. Actually, don't build it. Uh, there's no point in building it instantly because I don't have the DEC to optimize their effectiveness. So we go, we'll just activate that, get that plan going. We'll circle back when we once we have the DEC. And so yeah, just in conclusion, I, I'm trying to encourage everyone who pays attention to my channel to, you know, we've always talked about how your time and attention is valuable. We've always talked about how this game is not for days, weeks, months. It's about, it's about long-term trivial rewards paid daily that accumulate over a long time horizon that add up meaningfully as, you know, price appreciation eventually comes and you've got way and way, way more tokens because you've put in the time and the effort when no one else was. If that's what you've believed, that's why you watch the channel. If that's what you've thought Splinterlands could offer you, land is a new moment with an entirely new opportunity for us to attend in a special way to extract, for instance, research tokens or even SPS in a trivial way that can compound and meaningfully. And I think some people are going to fail to attend, even though they have land, even though they have cards, because they just think, oh, I'll deal with it later. That attitude in a space like this is going to cost you. Recognize the compounding nature of the rewards that are available. Act now or it will cost you. Thanks, guys. Have an amazing day. I'll get this set up off screen. But thanks so much. Have an amazing day. God bless.